scientist, are you ready for a virtual field trip? From sunny Los Angeles, let's go to the California Science Center with your hosts, Mariela and Monica, with a special appearance from Brittany Munson. Let's go to the California Science Center. Hi scientists, and welcome to our virtual field trips at the California Science Center. Before we get started, there are a few things we need to go over. virtual field trips will have a question of the day. And today's question is, what affects how objects move from one place to another? Pause the video now to write down the question of the day in your notebooks. And don't forget to write down or draw things that you observe in the video to help you answer the question of the day. virtual field trips will also have a buzzword. Today's buzzword is speed. Anytime you hear this word, be sure to make check marks or tally marks somewhere in your notebook to keep track of how many times you hear the buzzword. Can you count them all? Before I forget, there might be times we ask you to pause to think about a question. You'll see this sign and hear this sound to remind you to pause. Okay, scientists, I think we're ready to begin. Follow me. Oh, hi, scientist. We're making our way to the Wallace Edinburgh building to talk about... Hey. Well, that didn't quite work, Monica, but it's actually a great introduction to our topic today we're gonna learn one of the reasons why that water balloon didn't pop when it hit my shoulder. Follow me. Welcome to our big lab. We do a lot of fun experiments here, but today we're going to focus on dropping an egg from the mega tower and testing a model roller coaster. I love roller coasters. I do too. And they're a great way to talk about today's topic. Can you think of some things that make roller coasters so fun? but also maybe kind of scary? Hmm, well, I definitely agree that it can be kind of scary, and I didn't used to like roller coasters before because of the drops and loops, but they are super fun because you can raise your hands and go crazy, and it's okay because everyone else is doing it too. Yes, Monica, you're right. Drops and loops can be really scary, but they can also be really fun. Scientists, have you ever been on a roller coaster? Think back to when you have been on a roller coaster or maybe seen one. How do they get over the hills and through the loops? Hmm, I'm guessing speed because roller coasters also go very fast. Yes, roller coasters have a lot of speed. Now, I set this roller coaster up earlier, but I haven't had a chance to test it. Would you like to help me? Absolutely. Great. I'm going to have you use this wooden material as a roller coaster car, and I want you to drop it from the top of the roller coaster, but before you do that, scientist, what do you think is going to happen? Do you think that the roller coaster car will have enough speed to make it all the way through the roller coaster? Okay, let's find out. Ready? Three, two, one, Drop! Oh no! It didn't make it over the hill! No, it didn't. Let's take a look at this one more time and try to figure out why. I'm also going to bring up this speedometer to see if that will give us any clues. Scientist, what did you notice? Hmm, it 
seems as though this roller coaster car didn't have enough speed. Right, the roller coaster did not have enough speed. And without that speed, there wasn't enough energy to get the roller coaster car all the way over the hill. Scientist, do you have any ideas on how we can increase the speed and energy to get the car over the hill? Well, I could give the roller coaster a little push. Oh, I know. Roller coasters start really high. Maybe if we moved the start of the roller coaster a bit higher, that might increase the speed. I think that's a great idea. Let's test it. Wow, that time it had a lot more speed and energy to get through the whole roller coaster. That's right, Monica. Let's take a look at that one more time and watch the speedometer. Okay, I think I'm starting to understand a bit about why that water balloon didn't pop on your shoulder. But you said something about dropping eggs from a mega tower? Oh, right, I'd almost forgotten about that. This is gonna be fun, but a little bit messy. For this, let's make our way to the tower. Okay, Monica, as promised, we're gonna drop some eggs from the mega tower. What do you think is gonna happen? It's gonna crack, of course. Well, let's see if your prediction is correct. Dropping the egg in three, two, one, go! Monica, you are right. Scientist, can you explain why the egg cracked? Well, I guess it would crack because it was very high up on the tower. So the egg probably had a lot of speed and energy as it was falling to the ground. Exactly, Monica. Let's see that one more time with the speedometer to see the speed. Three, two, one, go. I have another egg here, Monica, but I want to prevent this one from cracking. What can we do to slow down the egg? Scientists, do you have any ideas about what we might be able to use? I think I know someone that can help us with this. Let's go. Brittany. Hi. Hi, scientists. My name is Brittany, and I am the senior educator here at the California Science Center. Mariella, I happen to see you drop an egg from the tower. That's right, Brittany. We're just trying to figure out what we can do to make this second egg slow its speed as it falls. Oh, I know. What if we made a parachute? Monica, I think that's a great idea. I think I have the materials we need to make that happen. Check this out. Let's attach a parachute to your egg and see if that will decrease the speed. We are using plastic tablecloth, cotton string, and tape to make our parachute. What tools would you use to make your parachute? That looks great, Monica. Now let's test it. Dropping the parachute in three, Two, one, go! It worked! The parachute reduced the speed of the egg. Yes, Monica, and with less speed, the egg had less energy and it didn't crack. So speed affects how an object moves, and the more speed an object has, the more energy it has. Oh, that makes sense. Like when you threw the water balloon, did it have a lot of speed? No, not really. Oh, so that's why it didn't break on your shoulder. That's right. You didn't throw the water balloon with enough speed, so it didn't have enough energy to break on Mariela. 
Do you happen to have any more water balloons? So the next time I want to throw a water balloon at you, I just have to throw it with more speed. That's right, Monica. Well, scientists, I hope you had fun investigating with us. Bye. Hi, scientists. Are you ready to play a game? For this game, you will need a piece of paper. It should be a regular sized paper like this one. You may also need a pencil or a pen, a ruler, tape, or a water bottle. Pause the video now if you need time to grab these materials. Okay, scientists, the first thing we need to do is build our game piece. Begin by folding your paper in half, hot dog style. Fold it once more in half, hot dog style. Great! Now we're going to take one side of the paper and fold it over to make a triangle. Next, we're going to keep following the triangle pattern down the paper. Awesome! You may notice you have a small square piece left over. Take the edge of the leftover piece and fold it down. Last but not least, tuck excess inside the triangle to secure your game piece. Looking good, scientist. Now, let's test this triangle. Your first challenge is to try to get this triangle to slide across the table, but there is one rule. Your wrist is not allowed to cross the edge of the table. How will you get your triangle to move, scientists? Will you use a tool? Will you use your hand or fingers? Maybe air. You and Monica will have 30 seconds to test your triangles. Are you ready? Get set. How did it go, scientist? Were you able to get the triangle to move? Are you ready for the next challenge? Okay, before we get to our next challenge, you need to set up your playing area. We are using our table as our playing area. Be sure to clear off any large books, materials, or experiments that might get in the way. One edge of your table is going to be your starting line. Let's place our triangle here. In the middle of our table, we're going to create two sections. We use tape to separate the sections, but you can use a water bottle, pencils, markers, or anything else near you to help you create two sections. Great, scientists! Are we ready to play? Your first challenge is to get your triangle as close to the edge of section one as possible without crossing into section two. You and Monica will have 30 seconds for this challenge. Are you ready, scientists? Get set, go! Were you able to get close to the line without going over it? Are you ready for the last challenge? Your last challenge is to get your triangle as close to the edge of the table in section two as possible. If you are at a table that is near a wall, your challenge is to get your triangle as close to the wall as possible without touching it. Oh, 
Okay, scientists, you and Monica will have 30 seconds for your final challenge. Are you ready? Get set, go! Scientists, that seemed a bit more difficult for Monica. How did you all do? Were you able to get the triangle from falling off the table or from touching the wall? How were you able to do that? Did you do anything different to try to get your triangle to go further than the last challenge? What did you do differently? Well, scientists, I hope you had fun playing. Now, let's head back to the discovery room. What a great field trip. Let's go over all the things that we did today. We started our field trip in the big lab, exploring speed on a model roller coaster. We learned the more speed an object has, the more energy it has. Then we made a parachute with Brittany and attached it to an egg to keep it from cracking as it was dropped from the mega tower. Finally, we played a game where we experimented with the speed of an object to complete challenges. Now scientists, do you remember the question of the day? What affects how objects move from one place to another? Can you use the buzzword to answer the question of the day? Speed. Pause the video now to try to answer the question of the day using the buzzword. Okay, scientists, it's time to count our tally marks. How many times did you hear the buzzword? Pause the video now to count your check marks or tally marks. And the answer is... 23. We hope you had fun on this virtual field trip at the California Science Center, and we look forward to seeing you next time. Bye. For more virtual field trip fun, visit our website.